Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be going ahead and creating some basic pathfinding and a nav mesh agent. We're not going to worry about anything having to do with more complex systems. We're just going to be doing the base level of navigation with AI and we'll probably throw in like four or five of them just to see how they feel. So let's go ahead and hop into Godot and get started. First off, I'm going to rename this damageable. Let's just rename it to enemy test. And you can see I went ahead and made it a sphere as opposed to a cube. While the sphere will be hidden in the final project, the sphere sphere is going to determine the AI's actual location and then the hands and arms will actually pull it around and it'll be using physics to do so. So we're just going to leave it as a rigid body 3D. But we are going to create a child of it and this one's going to be a navigation agent 3D. And we don't have to change too much on this. I am going to go ahead and enable avoidance just so that they avoid each other. And then also on the actual rigid body 3D, you can see I've set down the mass a little bit and I did implement a dampening to the angular. This is just because as it's rolling around, it gets up to really high speeds if you don't dampen the angular and I don't need it to roll too much. So I just set it to 0.3. We might even later on freeze the rotation, but for the time being, this works just fine. So we are going to go ahead and create a single script and this is going to be in the enemies folder. The script is going to be called basic enemy navigation agent. And then we're going to inherit this from rigid body 3D. And this is actually going to be going on the rigid body. And then we can go ahead and select the enemy test and we'll just drag that into the script. Now, before we actually jump into script, we are going to go ahead and create the nav mesh itself. Now, the way navigation works in Godot, we use something called a nav mesh, and this creates geometry to determine where the AI can walk or not. So in order for that to work, we have to create a navigation region 3D, and then we set the environment as a child of that navigation 3D. Now, we do have to create a navigation mesh resource, and we don't really want to change anything on this. There's a lot of things you can change, and if you're having performance issues, usually modifying these options can help you with that. But before we do anything with that, we can go ahead and hit bake nav mesh and you can see there is now a mesh everywhere on the top of things. And if we disable the environment, it'll be a little bit easier to see. Now, this allows the AI to determine where it should walk and how to walk around objects. So that's all we really need to do there. The AI just automatically locks into it with the navigation agent 3D, but we do need to go ahead and jump into that script. So let's do that. So first off, we're going to create a couple exports. We need a float that will be the maximum velocity. This will be the ID velocity that it is able to reach and then we'll have velocity change as well as a node 3d for the player target and a navigation 3d node for the navigation agent now an important note this right here the velocity is just debug later on the arms and legs are going to entirely determine the velocity so all of this is going to be cut out but we do need something to look at to make sure that everything's working properly so besides that we are going to create a vector 3 for the last player position and a vector 3 for the last enemy position that's our last position so these are the last times that the nav mesh has updated the path for this AI. So this way we don't update the path if neither the target nor the enemy is moving. We already have a path. This increases performance overall. So let's go ahead and create an override for physics. And within that override, we're just going to create an if statement first off that does exactly what I just described. It checks the distance between the last player position and the player target dot global position to some bias. So right now I'm just going to say if we haven't moved more than half a meter and then we do the same thing for the last enemy position and this object's global position. Now inside of that, we just go ahead and set the last player position as well as the last enemy positions. And these are just set to the player target dot global position and this AI's global position respectively. And then of of course we go ahead and set up the navigation agent dot target position equals last player position this actually generates the path that's why we do it within this if statement so we're not doing a large volume of path updates that's where you hit a lot of performance issues now, besides that, we're going to go ahead and create an if statement for if navigation agent dot is target reached. And this just returns a Boolean that says we're at the target location. And if so, we are going to set something called the constant force to zero. Now, this is a variable in rigid body 3Ds, and it's how we're going to actually move for the debugging. Later on, we're going to completely gut out this section, so it won't be here. But for the time being, this is a great way to move rigid body 3Ds in a smooth and performant manner. So next up, we go ahead and set the target velocity. We create a new variable for that, and we set it to the get next path position. That gets our direction, where the location we're actually trying to achieve, and subtract our global position from that and normalize it. Then we're going to multiply it by the maximum velocity, and this is going to get our target velocity. 
Now we are going to modify it before we actually set it to the constant force. And what we're going to do is set the target velocity to the target velocity subtracting the current linear velocity. And what this does is it lets us go ahead and get the difference between the two, which is what we actually want to change our velocity to the new velocity. And then we're just going to multiply that by velocity change multiplied by delta. Then all we have to do is set constant velocity, constant force to target velocity. Now this does mean that whenever we reach the target, we're going to go ahead and zero out our constant force. Constant force, even if you don't touch it, will continue to apply that force to the rigid body. So we're just going to go ahead and save that and build. And let's hop back in. We are going to set a couple of variables in the basic enemy. So let's go ahead and set the player object as well as the navigation. And let's set the maximum velocity to something like 30. And let's set the velocity change to, well, let's just set it to 30. This means that we can go to the maximum velocity in roughly one second. Now, before we go ahead and hit play, I do want to note that I went ahead and set up collision shapes. This lets us see the collider of the objects and lets us know that the ball is rotating and things like that. This is great for debugging. And then there's also a couple other things up here with visible navigation as well as visible avoidance if you need to debug those things. So we go ahead and hit play and you can see the ball is just rolling towards us. And if we get out of the way, it'll go ahead and curve around and attempt to roll back towards us. And if we go ahead and shoot it, it'll bounce away and then it'll come on back. Let's go ahead and check the pathfinding. So you can see it makes its way around the corner, albeit a little bit clumsily. All right, you can see it's made its way down here. All right, and that's going to be pretty much it for today. We are going to go ahead and go next week into setting up arms and legs, and these will just be debug spheres for the time being, determining where the arm and leg placements go. And we might actually spend a couple weeks working on that. I don't know if we'll get it all done in one week, but the arms and legs are what are, are going to actually create the velocity pulling the enemy towards the player or towards wherever its destination is. So that'll be a lot of interesting work on that side, and I'm excited to get started. But for now, that'll be all for this week. Thank you all for watching, and I hope you all have a wonderful week, and we'll see you all back here next week for the next tutorial.